Shalom. This week we are reading Parashat Kedoshim, beginning in Sefer Vayikra, book of Leviticus, chapter 19. And the Parsha begins with Hashem exhorting the people of Israel, You shall be holy, for I, Hashem your God, am holy. And many of the Torah's commandments are concentrated in this week's Parsha. But early on, in fact in verse 4, we find the verse, Al tifnu el ha'elilim, do not turn to the idols, and molten gods shall you not make for yourselves. I am Hashem, your God. Obviously, we know this is a central theme in the Torah, that there's only one true God who can't be limited by any representation, who has no form, who we can't depict. So, the Torah warns us not to turn to idols. But, is there something deeper in this verse? There seems to be some sort of repetition. Why are we told, do not turn to the idols and molten gods shall you not make for yourselves? What is the difference between idols and molten gods? And why the conclusion of the verse, I am Hashem, your God? So actually, there are two different ideas, really, that are being expressed by these two different words. Do not turn to the idols, elilim. This word elilim, it's really connected to the word El, which is one of the names which, by which the Torah conveys the idea of God and godliness. But we know that God is also called the God of all gods, even though He's the only God. And we know that the Torah warns us many times not to worship false gods, Elohim Acherim, Elohim also being related to El. And this is because the whole idea of the powers of the world, the powers that be, the structure of nature, and all of the manifestations of godliness can be actually misconstrued and misunderstood and separated from the whole by people to the extent that they can become objects of worship by which we think that we have to appease them or line them up in a certain way or somehow um, connect ourselves to them for our success, for our protection. And that is really the idea of Elilim, of making something into uh, a god. But it's really all coming from Hashem. And then we have this word, Masecha, do not make for yourselves molten gods. And we know that the word Masecha in Hebrew is related to the word for mask. And mask is something, obviously, that covers over, that uh, comes between something that hides identity. But also the word masecha, the root of that word, and it's so important to understand the Hebrew language, the root of the word, and what the message of the Torah is really conveying. The word masecha is also related to nesach, which means to pour out. And this, of course, makes sense because we're being admonished here not to make molten gods. And, of course, that means making an idol cast in metal. This is something that's poured out. So the verse again tells us, do not turn to the idols and molten gods shall you not make for yourselves. But again, if we realize the, the double meaning of this word, masecha, that it also means cover. Something that is being employed to hide something or to cover something over or really to protect, just as a mask protects identity. So we understand that the idea of the molten God is something that we feel, that a person feels is keeping us covered, is keeping us protected, is keeping us perhaps hidden from harm's way. So really what we understand here is that we live in a world in which our challenge really is to constantly focus on the unity of all things, the unity of Hashem as expressed in nature, as expressed in the very stuff of our lives as he communicates with us and to realize that everything is really coming from him and the reason that the Torah has to bother to emphasize this and to tell us and to warn us about this danger is because we have a tendency to imagine things and Elilim, false gods, idols is the very definition of an imagination, of wild imaginings, of, of, of imagining a universe which is not the oneness of Hashem. And so Elulim are these gods that are imagined and Masecha is really their representation. 
or in a word, if you will, manufactured gods. And this is something that we all do at various times under various circumstances and situations in our lives. This is the human tendency which the Torah in its infinite wisdom is foreshadowing and warning us against, not to manufacture our own gods, not to get caught up in the, in the, the whirlwind of events and, and circumstances which somehow brings us to a, a, a state of panic in which we start to perceive with some sort of universal persecution complex that the universe is malignant and lined up against us. And we begin to, to worship, as it were, to fear, to adulate, to show homage to, and to be in awe of these false gods and to represent them according to our own whim, according to our own needs. And because, you know, one of the ideas really that the Torah is expressing here in the deepest way, what's the idea of a molten god, of a caste metal god, you know what? Change it. When the time comes and you need another god, just melt it down and remold it to fit your particular pathetic, pitiful needs at that particular moment. And that's really what this idea of an Elohim Masecha is all about. Making a mask. Whether it's covering over our own identity or covering over God's identity, it's something that we feel somehow in a, in a very transient and in a very surface way is protecting us from the reality of who Hashem really is. But it's all totally manufactured. And so really, you know, what's really interesting is that the, the only objective thing that we really have in this world that Hashem gives us is Himself. And God is totally objective. But the false gods that we create through our own panic mode and through our own subjectivity are indeed totally subjective. So what the Torah is really warning us here is that we have to be careful not to imagine God based on ourselves and our needs, but rather for us to shape ourselves, to conceive and mold ourselves according to who God really is. And the verse ends with these, these words of both love and expectation and justice and the attribute both of mercy and, and, and din, I am Hashem your God. All the perception and all the manifestation that you see in this world of El, of Elohim, of, of godly power, it's all coming from me, Hashem, the name of love. But I do expect you to be honest in all of your doings because that's my attribute of justice as well. And Hashem is the opposite of all of these Elilim, that we all have a tendency that we can somehow, sometime be prone to fall into the, the quicksand of, of this notion of a false god and then manufacture for ourselves some sort of comfort zone, some sort of place where we think that we are in control and we understand that all we have to do is just play our lines a certain way and everything is going to be okay. But that isn't the reality of the situation we're being warned specifically because this happens in the human condition. Don't manufacture God because He is the opposite of these circumstantial, fleeting uh, attempts to try and, and grab hold of reality and form it and mold it and cast it our way. Our entire existence is rooted in Him. And this is the real thing. And this requires a tremendous commitment and dedication and the ability for us to develop this spiritual maturity in this world, in this life that He gave us to realize that we cannot manufacture God on our terms, on our, according to our expectations, because this is absolutely the real thing. Ani Hashem Elokeichem. I am Hashem your God.